with this COVID situation and the fact that I don't go anywhere for at least one year now, it's a little bit complicated to find raw materials and scrap and other things to make something. But I think I found enough to make a beam engine. The idea is to start from a base with here a flywheel, the crank of course, drive shafts, beam, here comes a stand and here comes cylinder with piston and drive shaft. Now if you're interested in building plans of this engine here it is. I need a base, a central column, a tube for cylinders and pistons, all kinds of pivots, a flywheel, flywheel axle and bearings, a bit of bronze to make pivot points and of course the beam. Now I think I'm gonna make it a two cylinder engine and you can ask me why two engines because I have enough to make two beams, two cylinders and two pistons. I think that's a good reason. This project is gonna be a bit of shaper work, late work, a little bit of uh, welding and a little bit of angle grinding and even a little bit of hand filing. I think I'm gonna start with the base, clean it up, make a nice flat surface in the shaper and make the cutout here for the flywheel to fit in. That seems to be a good base to start with. First I'm gonna clean up this surface a bit just to, to have it clean, nothing special, it will be more or less square. I'm gonna cut a groove here somewhere, no specific dimensions is not important. And this groove is gonna serve me to break the chip. I'm gonna cut these two small surfaces here on the inside and after I'm gonna do the top surface. but. The part is too long to go completely in the shaper, so I'm going to do it in two times. First I'm going to cut probably one part and then flip it around and do the other part, of course, in the length, not like this. So first, these surfaces and the groove. <laughs> is finished of course I have to drill holes everywhere to hold the features in place but I think I'm gonna start with the flywheel to hold this flywheel in place I'm gonna use this block of course it's too big 
I'm gonna reuse it a, a bit and then put these uh, ball bearings in. I think that will do. Okay, more shaper work. <laughs> That's gonna be a lot better. This bearing comes here, the other one the other side. So I have to bore this out and then the bearing will go sit in. That's the idea. So let's find the center of this thing. Must be somewhere about in the middle I suppose. Let's cut this thing in two and over to the lathe. Make these borings and after I'm gonna cut it to length in a shaper. That will do. Just saw me cut this chamfer here on this uh, boring with the yellow triangular cutting tool and I didn't pay attention the tool was a bit too low so it was the underside of the tool that rubbed on this surface and it left me a fantastic burr so I had to deburr the whole thing and now these bearings fit if they want to, uh, here you go, no problem. Now, I'm gonna cut this uh, underside here. I have a washer that I can put in here. Okay, washer, go in. What's happening? Uh -huh. And then, like this, I'm gonna put the two points together, give it a hit. Okay, now I'm sure they're aligned. Pass, I forgot to push the record button so you can only witness the finishing pass.
It's a fly real time, but there is a little problem. I have here this jaw is 11 and a half millimeter step and here too and this one is 26 so the center line of my part will be out of the jaws no way to hold it like this that's not gonna work so I'm gonna find another solution first I thought install the whole thing on a back plate but that's a bit complicated and then I thought bah, let's give it a try on the tree jaw seems to work let's go for it the idea is to fit this piece of round in here but it's a little bit too small it's gonna leave the corners of this square here but I think I'm gonna roll with it as I say yes with a big hammer it will fit Oops. First I didn't want to clean up this uh, flywheel because I think this gives it a bit an industrial look but the casting is so bad it's absolutely not symmetric so I have to clean it up a bit. Let's go for it. And this is where I have my first visit of Bozo. I took a cut that was probably a bit too deep and this wheel stopped turning and the chuck continued turning. Maybe you can see a bit here the traces on this uh, shaft. So it was again completely out of center. Now luckily for me I can register very easily on this surface, this surface and this surface. So I reinstall it in the chuck and we continue. I have a flywheel. Let's see if it works. To determine the height of this column that comes here, it's maybe a good idea to first make the two cylinders and the pistons and then maybe making the cranks and then we can see at what height we have to work. So I have here two cylinders and cylinder head.
Gut. That's gonna work. Right, I made these four little things here, these pivots. Of course, I have to clean them up a bit. I also made these pins that goes through the cylinder heads. And I wanted them to be a really tight fit. So, I have one Burzo pin, complete failure, and I made a new one. That feels better. Ah, to be a tight fit, it's a tight fit. All my screws are jumping around. Right, that was a little bit hammer and crowbar mechanic. Let's do a little bit of assembly and see if it works. Okay, it needs a little bit of fine tuning. But I think this is gonna work. And this is where I'm gonna end this video. I will make the pistons and the beams and the, I have to figure out the valve system. I don't have uh, thought about it yet too much. But I'm gonna do that in part two. And I hope it's gonna be just a two part video and not three part because three is a bit too much and I don't want to make it too long and if you have any questions about this build don't hesitate put it in the comment section and I will try to answer Tr try <laughs>